So hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is David Fredrickson, 51 year old type one diabetic. And I've done quite a bit from CrossFit to calisthenics to all kinds of different eating pro, pro, um, profiles and macronutrients. And I've tried all kinds of different supplements. And I'm here to basically just share my experience and the knowledge that I've uh, accumulated over the years. And today I'm sitting here in the car, like some of my videos are, and my wife is in the Goodwill bins right now and she's picking away. So I don't know if you guys have ever been to the bins, but they bring out these big old bins full of clothes and it's just like a free for all and they just pick away at uh, and try to find items that they can sell. And she's really good at it. So I go in there and I'll follow her around or run as her protection bodyguard, not smiling. <laughs> um, because some people in there can be a little pushy. Um, so, but I'm, I'm chilling out here. I want to do this video on protein. And I know you've seen other videos on protein, but I want to talk mainly about this meta-analysis study and actually try to just give you guys a little more information on protein intake. So through this meta-analysis study, they actually came to the conclusion, and there's a lot of YouTubers out there that are gonna pretty much roughly make it sound like it's really easy and just do one gram per pound of body weight. And it's actually just easy to figure that out, but that doesn't work if you're, you know, if your body fat percentage is really high um, because you could be eating too much protein and taking away some of the other macros that are actually tasty and good and kind of not making your lifestyle sustainable. So in this meta-analysis study, they actually took a bunch of studies and they came to the conclusion that most studies were saying that 0.7 to 1.3 grams per pound of body weight, of course they use kilograms, but I like to do um, per pound of body weight, was sufficient enough for muscle protein synthesis, eating food throughout the day, 25 to 35 gram bolus throughout the day, uh, spaced out maybe three to four hours if you eat any more than that, let's say 40 or 50 grams of protein per day, you can push it to, I think they said six hours. Um, muscle protein synthesis spikes, they spike, takes about two hours for muscle protein synthesis to spike to a to the highest level after consuming, whether it's whey, whether it's other food products, it all depends on your digestion and the way it's broken down in your body, which the way protein and peptides are broken down in your body and amino acids is they're broken down in the stomach, of course, when you swallow it, 50% in the small intestines, they're broken down and absorbed, and the other around 50 plus or minus uh, amount is transferred to the liver, where then the liver breaks down and utilizes uh, the amino acids for its own purposes, which is usually for cellular repair, uh, skin, hair, nails, neural function, some, some protein uh, synthesis. So the body decides on where it wants to where it wants to send the amino acids into the blood and the plasma to actually do what it prefers because the body's not sitting there going, yeah, we're going to grow muscle first and foremost. And the body's saying, I want to survive. So depending on your age, and like in this meta-analysis study, they talk about on the ranges for protein, the 0.7 to 1.3, they speculate that when you're younger, of course, let's say you're 10, 15% body fat, okay? Um, when you're younger, you can, can you sit more on the lower end of the protein intake of the 25 to 35 grams per meal if you wanna do it that way and you're not just trying to, you know, figure out your macros. So you can sit on the low end, probably the 0.7 to the 0.90 if you're in the younger age bracket. But they did say, and they came to, uh, they speculated, out of the studies that when you're older, so what's older? I'm 51, but if you're 35, you might be thinking you're older. So what's older? That'd be kind of like case specific. So I figure I'm guessing 40 and above, 35 and above, depending on the shape you're in, that your body's gonna need actually close to 50% more protein than a younger person would. So that's when you would wanna go on the high end if you are looking to gain muscle. So here's another thing. If you're not training to gain muscle and you're training to preserve muscle or basically in the gym just for health reasons, you don't need that high end of protein. But if you're in the gym to actually get bigger and get stronger, then that's, and you're, you're up in that age, uh, my age, then they suggest 
upping your protein intake. And the reason for that is because the body's always going through a repair and breakdown process. And unfortunately, as we get older, we become more broken. <laughs> so we break down more. So we have more breakdown going on yeah, when we do break down more. So, um, so that's why you want to go ahead and sit more on the higher range, one gram or higher of protein intake, one to 1.3. Now, personally, I don't go I don't go by, I go by lean body mass. So I actually do in over between 1.4 to 1.5 grams per pound of lean body mass. So I sit at 10% to 15%. And majority of the time I'm maybe 10, 12% body fat. I don't like, I just like to be lean year round. I'm not looking at being shredded and cut. There's a lot of taxation on the hormones and the system when you're trying to always be shredded. And I just choose not to always be so-called shredded. Uh, so I take that 10, 12%, whatever it's going to be. I take it off of my mean weight that I'm at right now. And then I go ahead and times that weight, uh, my lean body mass by the amount of protein for the intake there. Now, if you're younger, you don't really need that. The other thing too is I'm a type one diabetic, so I have a metabolic disease and I am more catabolic than everybody else. So my protein intake per meal before and after training, is about 50 grams. And then throughout the day, it's in order between 35 and 40 grams of protein per meal. Now I go on a high end because the study speculated. And if you read the study, it's very, very interesting. There's probably a lot more than I'm going to be able to go over this in the time frame. But they said that this, although there was only maybe a, I'd say 11 to 19% increase in muscle protein synthesis from, from 20 to 40 grams of protein, if you went from 40 to 70 grams of protein, what they did notice was not an increase in muscle protein synthesis, but they noticed a decrease in muscle protein breakdown, which actually just gives you, you makes you more anabolic. So in my case, I go kind of in a higher range per meal and before and after training because of the fact that I have a metabolic disease, which is type one diabetes, and I am way more catabolic than somebody who is healthy and, and doing well. Now these protein intakes also depend on the fact of, uh, if I didn't say this already, body mass. So if you are carrying a lot of weight and you're just starting out and you're trying to lean down, then I would sit on the low end. You could even go lower than 0.7 grams per pound of body weight if you're carrying 50 pounds, uh, 60 pounds of fat. So more protein is probably not needed for somebody who's gained a lot of weight or you know, trying to lose a lot of weight and they're in there trying to recomp their body. But you do want to get, you know, a sufficient amount of protein. Honestly, I would say 0.7 and I would try to figure out your lean body mass to a certain degree by basically looking at where you were before you gained the weight, your height and everything at that time. And then go, and go ahead and minus that percentage that I'm figuring out of lean body mass uh, or, you know, fat mass out of your weight at that point, and I would go off of that. So there are, uh, the the protein intake thing is super important. That's why I wanted to do this video. It's not that you start out, and then the reason why I'm doing this video too is because I started out that way. I was like, oh, one gram per pound of body weight. That should be sufficient. Well, over the years, I realized, depending on the diet, the training I'm doing, I needed more protein, especially if I wanted to make gains or if I wanted to repair and recover better. And it's not, it's all case specific. It's all individual specific. So we're talking about the metabolic disease. We're also thinking about how hard you train. I train five days straight. I don't recommend that for anybody. I've been doing this a long time. I just prefer the weekends off. I want that volume and that's what I do. I make gains. I adjust weekly. So I adjust not my protein. So my protein pretty much always stays the same, but I adjust my, my energy intake. So I'll adjust my carbs. I kind of like carb cycle. I go by the way I feel. So if I'm a, if I have a day where I'm run down after training, then I'm like, okay, I need more more glucose. I need to because I'm going to burn that off anyways. So way faster than I do fat, and that's one way I stay lean is I keep my fat on the low end and I keep my carbohydrates high. I'd say to two seventy to three hundred something. Well, depends on the day. So 
the macros, the protein intake, this is all case specific. It's all something you have to figure out. And I hope this little bit of information kind of helps. I hope the study helps because it's very, very interesting if you read through it. There's a lot of stuff you might not understand that is sometimes how I have to look up. I'm like, what the heck do they mean by that? <laughs> you know, but it's very, very interesting. I hope this helps. If you guys do have any specific questions, then leave them down in the comment section. Like if I didn't cover it and I do have an answer for it, I definitely will leave it there to help you out because like I said, I've been through it all. I've done the, I, I was around when muscle magazines were around and uh, training methods and stuff like that. And to be honest with you, this whole thing about body recomposition, gaining muscle has so much to do with your diet that it's, and how you fuel yourself before and after training and during training that this video could be 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes long if somebody was questioning me, asking me specific questions and too many YouTubers and there's a lot of good ones from Greg Doucette that talks to the intermediate and to, to Jeff Nippard who talks to more of the advanced people and they're both great information givers but when you're talking when you listen to greg Doucette, he's talking more to the intermediate by just saying well don't do your macros don't worry about protein but the truth is if you really want to do that right you do have to worry about your proteins you have to worry about your coverage if you really want to gain muscle there's more to it so speaking to the intermediates making it sound easier than it is or to talking to people who making it sound easier than it is is not my thing because this is not an easy thing to do and i give credit and props to anybody out there busting their butt in the gym making gains and really trying to figure this out and figuring out your own body you guys are unbelievable you're unique than the average person i think rich piani we did the 1% or the 2%. You guys are all in that. And I just want to congratulate you guys for sticking with it and really pursuing uh, the perseverance, the dedication, and all that great stuff. Once again, this is Dave back with another video. Uh, we'll see you next time. I hope my wife's going to be done here at the uh, bins pretty soon because I've got to pee. Anyways, we'll talk to you guys later.